hear the voices of greatness on the World Wide Web. VG8 Radio, the voices of greatness. Hello again, peace. My name is Shiki Yuki, and again, we're online back at Two Game Mode, which is a video gaming and tabletop gaming podcast. So guys, bago tayo magsalamala, we're gonna do a recap in our previous episode that we tackled previously, no, last week. So, nung episode 7, we tackled about how to save up money on Steam, which is I provide tips of how you could save up dun sa mga pinagbibilihan nyo ng mga laro on Steam. Kasi tayo mga Pinoy, meron tayong impulsive side na pag bumili tayo ng laro, or meron tayong nakitang laro na gusto natin, binibili natin sila kagad. Which is sobrang sagwa, ano naman nun, saklat naman nun, no? diba? Pag magsisave ka and that. And then the second topic na tinakal natin previously is about how to get better in video games with tabletop games. So sinabi ko doon dati, if I rather than previous week, is that Uh, nakakatulong siya at the same time and then pinobride ko rin yung mga tips for game designers kung paano mo i-apply yung paggawa mo ng mga games doon sa ginagawa mong uh, concept or yung team niya, right? Yun lang yung pinag-usapan natin doon sa previous topic. If you want to check it out just go and check in our VG8 radio page para mapanood nyo ulit kung ano yung tinakal natin doon sa mga topics na yun. So, Uh, letting that aside, we're now going to the latest episode natin for today. So, episode 8 is going to talk about two topics as the usual. Una yun natin si video games. Uh, sa video games, we're going to tackle naman this time is sharing our medium of how to introduce video games to other people. Intro natin. Uh, yun dun kasi sa mga video games, diba, i- i- ano eh, may pakasteriopotype yung mga tao eh. Yung tipa na sasabihin nila na o oh, itong mga video games na to, nakakasama to sa mga tao. Or yung mga wala ka naman natututunan dyan. Or kung ano-ano man yung mga sinasabi nila na negative about that. Pero ayun nga, kagaya nga na sinabi ko nga, and, like, ulit-ulitin ko, uh, video games is also in a way of our medium na it could help you to develop you as your character. And then, in an educational way, makakatulong rin siya sa mga bata in any case. So, paano nga ba? pagdating dito, which is AP pinpoint ko na dito sa mga bullets natin sa uh, topic natin for today. Una, sabihin natin na kung paano natin turuan yung mga tao, or paano natin ini-introduce yung mga tao na hindi mailig sa mga games. Kasi, yung ano, mahirap tanggalin yung pagka-stereotype nila with regards dun sa video games, ba? Diba? Etong tips na to, masasabi ko or makakatulong kahit papano sa inyo kung paano mo sila masasabihan na itong video games na to nakakatulong to or whatever basta kung ano man yung gusto mo sabihin na positive things about video games alright so first tip choosing the right game um, ganito kasi guys pag pipili ka na isang game dapat yung tama or yung parang preference ng tao pero wag mo silang pagpipilian ng video games na Basta-basta lang. Like, uh, don't let them choose. It is actually a trap. Like, literal know your audience. Um, isang example would be sabihin natin, ano ba yung parang klaseng specific genre or movie yung mga pinapanood niya? Action ba? Or mm, mystery ba? Or thriller? Suspense? Horror? Yung mga ganun. Pag nahanap mo yung parang ano niya, yung parang preference niya with regards to sa mga outside with regards sa video games, genre rin siya eh dun sa movie, for example, sabihin natin, may siya sa mga horror. Ayun, palaroyin mo siya ng mga, sabihin natin, yung mga survival horror, like Resident Evil, Silent Hill, yung mga ganun na games. Basta yung, sa feel mo, or mararamdaman mo, or may hunch ka, na magugustuhan nila yung laro na yan. That's the first tip. Second tip, ang sinasabi dito is that, choosing genres that they would understand. Yung binanggit ko sa inyo na genres, yung kagaya ng horror, suspense, thriller, there are actually some specific terminologies kasi na maintindihan nila. Let's say, sabihin natin, example, RPG or role-playing games. ba diba may mga terminologies doon na there's this specific system na you need to level up. Ano ba yung ibig sabihin ng level up? Ano ibig sabihin ng experience? Ano ibig sabihin ng combat? Spells? Attack? Yung mga ganon. Depend. 
So, meron siya mga terminologies na there might be a possibility na si non-gamer hindi niya maintindihan yung sinasabi mo sa kanya. So, if ever man na mag uh, ano siya, um, mag ano siya, is that dapat yung sasabihin mo sa kanya or rather yung sasabihin mo sa ano na i-involve mo sa kanya na laro is yung tipo na dapat um, yung makaka-relate siya, 'di ba? So ayun nga pala by the way, sorry, shout out kay Pits dun sa nagano sa nag-comment. Hello Pits, shout out sa iyo. Thank you for tuning in Game Mode. So sa mga gusto mo mag-engage with the topics, kahit wala siya dito sa ating cheat sheet, pwede naman kayo mag-drop in the comments and then we could tackle about that specific topic. Na dapat game related daw, wag masyadong personal. Okay? So, sa so, uh, going back, yung sinasabi ko about yung dun sa ano natin sa dapat nakaka-relate siya. Para in a way, yung terminology na sasabihin mo sa kanya, makakaintindi siya. Like sabihin natin, there's this gore. Siyempre, alam niyo yung gore. Yung mga tipa na ganun. So, that's second tip. Third tip. Um, ay, sorry. Before I forget. Uh, pag, chuchu, pag pipili kayo ng mga genres na maintindihan nila, kailangan may impressive visuals, reasonable story, at saka mayroong strong central person uh, character. Yung, tina- yung tinutukoy ko dito dapat is that yung mahuhuk mo sila or makukuha mo yung attention nila with regards dun sa game nila. Yung three na binanggit ko, importante importante yon when you're going to choose a ge- specific genre for one game para sa kanila. Alright? Third tip, uh, something recent. Pumili kayo ng something recent na laro. Uh, mahirap kasi, aminin man natin o hindi. Hindi natin sila maaakit doon sa mga classic na nostalgia video games kasi hindi nila makikita yung uh, value or yung sentimental value na yun kasi hindi sila gamers. Example, sabihin natin, personally I like Harvest Moon franchise. Big kasi nung bata ako, I played agri- agricultural games, yung Rune Factory, uh, Harvest Moon, uh, Innocent Knife. So yung mga nilalaro ko na yun na if ever may dumating na ano na time na parang oh gusto kong laruin ulit yung Harvest Moon Friends of the Mineral Town which is sa GBA laluruin ko siya ulit yung tipo na sasabihin mo dun sa non-gamer na ito laruin mo to luma na laro sobrang ganda niya promise hindi nila makikita yon kasi bakit? iba na kasi yung generation ngayon that they're actually besides focusing mainly on the gameplay itself they actually focus more on the visual as I do believe in kasi Uh, humans are a visual beings. Kumbaga. So, pag nakikita nila na yung maganda yung visuals, sabihin natin na uh, yung latest na Resident Evil na sa ano, ayun, Resident Evil remake na ano, 2? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Resident Evil 2? So, imaginein mo, magugustuhan nila yon kahit ano, hindi nila nalaro, nalaro yung una na remake. Kasi, despite that, na hindi nila nalaro yung, ano, yung Resident Evil 2 na luma, pag nilaro nila yung bago na Resident Evil 2, magugustuhan nila. Kasi, it's their pres- personal preference, and then gusto nila yung story progression, or yung character development, or yung mga characters itself, like, ano, sobrang hunk ni Leon, or si, ano, si Claire. Gusto nila, mga ganon. Like, fanboying or fangirling, anyway. Alright? Um... Ayun, another one dun sa pinanggit ko, dun sa choosing of something recent. Ayun, long story short, fight the temptation of suggesting all games. Ganun lang. Next tip, uh, choose something with a good opener. One example na pwede kong i-provide dito is Heavy Rain. Heavy Rain is a very narrative game na yung story niya is about uh, one father na inaalagaan niya yung mga bata niya. And there's this, this one specific incident na nakidnap or rather sorry before nakidnap yung isa nilang bat ano anak dalawa kasi yung anak nila yung unang ano nila anak nila died from the car accident and then second years later nakidnap yung another nilang anak so nagkaroon ng good opener or yung narrative niya na tipo na suspense na pagka thriller that that father or that specific character is going to do everything for the sake of his kid So, imaginein mo with that very good uh, presentation ng opener, sobrang ganda or sobrang maaaki, mapapaakit mo talaga yung mga ano, yung non-gamers doon sa mga laro na yun. I actually experimented that like previous, like a way back, like a year or two years ago. 
pinalaro ko yung isa kong kaibigan ng kaibigan ng anak ng ano ko ng kapatid ko he played every rain and he liked it na <laughs> sobrang opo no ba yan sobra namang intense nito yung tipo na hahawak lang siya ng controller and then he's like literally feeling kung ano yung situ- situation niya kasi sobrang engaging ng laro niya uh, it has a QTE QTE stands for quick time uh, ano to? quick time event uh, quick time event so kailangan mabilis mag-react si player pag may nakita siyang mga ano na mga buttons kailangan pipindutin niya yun or else pag late siyang bumindot ng mga buttons ang mayayari dun uh, there's a consequence pag sobrang ka late mag-react so ganun lang kaya sobrang engaging ng Heavy Rain. That's one good example for a good opener. So, if ever na meron another specific game that has a narrative na merong QTE, sobrang gandang or recommendable yun for new gamers kasi may engage talaga sila sa story progression ng game. Alright? Ana, um, di ako pwede magsabi or hindi ako mag- pwede mag-pinpoint ng one specific bad game eh. Uh, pero I cannot name that name I rather that game Pero one example of a very bad game Is that Meron siyang binibisual Na mga ano Na mga landscapes and that And then meron mga conversations na You cannot relate And then Wala lang Nakikita mo lang Nandito ka sa kalesa Or dun sa carriage There's this group of people na Hindi mo maintindihan kung ano yung mga pinagsasabi mo nila And then you cannot grasp of what is happening to your character? Kasi first person view yun nangyayari. Like, you're into this carriage and then you're not doing anything at all. You're just listening and can't help. Like, wala kang freedom. Like, gamitin mo yung mouse mo, titingin-tingin ka lang dun sa kung ano man yung pinoprovide sa'yo ng, ano, ng game. Okay? So, another good opener, last, sorry, but not the least, is um, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 at yun. Yung ano, uh, yung nandun sa sasakyan, yung dinarag yung ano, yung, I forgot, yung in hostage ba yun and that. And then nakikita niya yung mga pangyayari dun sa gera. Yun. Hindi ko ma- maalala yun. It's a big memory of mine since high school ko pa siya nilaro. Okay? Moving on. Um, don't force them to play. Uh, that's one another tip. Bakit? Kasi, so, uh, aminin man natin, they're not gamers, diba? If you're going to force them to play that game, they won't gonna go and enjoy that. So, if ever man, long story short, bag mo silang palaruin pag ayaw nila. Just tell them the quick synopsis and then let them play a quick rundown na, ito, laruin mo to, it's about ganito, gan- and then that. And then pl- they play the little and then sinabi niya, ano ba yan, nakakahilo, nakakalula naman itong laro na to, kasi dami nang nangyayari. Tapos sabihin niya, tap, tapos sabihin mo lang sa kanya na, oh sige, kahit ano na lang sa susunod na lang, yung ibang suggestion naman yung papatry ko sa iyo. If ever you want to get involved with gaming, kung baka, ganun yun. Alright, next topic, be encouraging. Bakit? Kasi importante to Kailangan positive ka. Huwag kayong masyadong nega. Ito yung isa sa mga wag na wag mong gagawin. Don't ever take the controller of that of that player. Kasi gusto ko nga ito experience kanya yung laro eh, di ba? Bakit sasabihin mo, uh, bakit i-gagawin mo na kung kunin mo yung controller na, aka na nga yan, ganito kasi yung gagawin mo. Don't ever do that. Let them experience actually of how the full experience of that specific game get involved with that player. Para makita nila kung bakit ganito ka-engrossing uh, or ka, hindi naman if ano, co-obsessive, like infatuated, infatuated with regards to sa game na nilalaro nila in that specific title. Alright? So, next. Mm, start with single players. Um, bakit? Kasi, aminin man natin, we are actually competitive. Kahit sabihin natin na, eh, ano ako, humble ako, ganyan-ganyan. Imaginin mo, maglaro ka competitive, sabihin natin, Mario Kart Party. Sige, kom- hindi yan competitive. Pero pagdating yan, sabihin natin na, Ano na, 3, 2, 1, go na. Simula na ng kanera. Pag naglaro sila, grabe. Sasabihin nila, humble, humble ka. Pero, deep inside, you have a gamer spirit. Pag natalo ka, sabi mo sa deep inside mo, ano ba yan, natalo ako. <laughs> Babao yung one next time. So, dapat, ayun. Para, ma- para ano, para makuha mo yung ano nila, attention nila, instead of making them com- ano, competitive, ang gawin mo sa kanila, palaroy mo sila ng single players. Another one kung bakit is that para ma-focus 
mo sila na provide yung mga tips or yung mga side comments na oy wag mong gawin yan or something like that pero wag naman yung blunt just tell them na ano uh, parang low key example uh, wag mong gawin yan kasi ano baka may mangyari eto parang bigyan mo sila ng alternative way to do something na if ever na gusto nilang gawin yung situation na yun kasi may hirap kasi na ano, sasabihin mo sa kanila na wag mong gawin to at all. Pwede naman nilang gawin yon para maintindihan nila yung sakit na ano, if ever na, for example, there's this specific thing na kailangan nilang inspect Pero alam mo sa sarili mo na trap yon E di sabihin mo, sige, check mo yan. Pero ano, ingat na lang. Ganon-ganon. Tapos pag na-check na, oh, wag kang tatawa if ever na mangyari yun. <laughs> Pero pwede ka tumawa kung ganon kayo ka-close at all. And yun, alright? Next, communicate. Uh, sinabi ko nga, dun, pag single player games yung nilalaro mo, mas, mara, mas mafocus mo yung tao to communicate with them na wag mong gawin ito and that and then give a side comment na pag sinabi ni player na or ni non-gamer na nagustuhan ko tong ano na to, yung mission na to. Ah. Tapos, pwede ka mag-sign comment doon na o oh, nga, no, nagustuhan ko nga rin kasi ganito yung character na to na gusto ko yung ano na ito, yung personality niya at And then, ayoko yung character na to kasi suplada. Oo, oh, naiintindihan ka tayo. Mga ganun na side comments at that. So, maganda yung, ano, yung communication. Like, you're letting them engage para you're slowly dragging them to the gamers then na, or gamers community. Hindi naman din. Gorobin naman din. Ayan, community na para makuha mo yung ano nila. Yung, yung ano nila. Yung, ano tawag dito? Kasi yung attention or yung dun sa ano nila, yung, uh, I cannot find the term. Pero you know what I'm talking about, right guys? Ganun siya. And then last but not the least, have fun. So, pag naglalaro naman talaga tayo ng games, we literally have, have to look for that specific fun or fun factor, di ba? Kasi ang pangit kasi sa feeling na pag maglalaro ka ng game, ano lang, simply time passer and that. Pero, time passer naman din, Uh, Siyempre, nagganap ka rin din ng, ano, ng factor na masaya ka dahil gusto mo yung ginagawa mo with, in regard sa gaming, right? So, ganun lang kayo panta- importante. So, that's basically the gist of how you could introduce non-gamers doon sa mga gusto... Uh, i-intro- Ay, sorry. Let me rephrase that. That is one way or the few things that you can do of how you could introduce non-gamers to the gaming community. Ganun lang, guys. So, that wraps up to our video gaming side. Pero before that, meron tayong knock, lock on. So, as I mentioned from a previous episode, lock on is a special segment na ginagawa natin to feature with my own personal preferences kung if ever na magkaka- ano, gusto nyo ba or hindi. And then, bibigyan ko siya ng quick synopsis about that game. So, here's the hint as I provided in our previous post dun sa ginawa ko before airing this. It's actually basically a quite a classic game. It's similar about, or its game mechanics is about, ayun, Advance Wars. Advance Wars is a very turn-based strategy game na parang ang ginagawa mo, you're going to have these soldiers or yung mga vehicles that, ayun, mga tanks, infantries, doing the specific attacking dun sa opposing party to get victorious. But, ayun, I'm not gonna say any much. I'm just gonna show you how the game looks like. So, let's go and check it out this video, guys, that I prepared for you. War is here. The Denolden Empire threatens the world with bloody conflict. Their excavation of dangerous ancient technology must be stopped. Take control of the White Fangs and resist the Denolden Empire across an epic campaign. Revive an ancient bloodline, protect your loved ones, and uncover the secrets behind a world on the edge of disaster. On the battlefield, combine your unit's attacks for greater firepower. Displace enemies with assaults to conquer new ground. 
turn the tides of battle with devastating commander powers. Challenge other commanders across 88 battlefields in multiplayer and wage tactical warfare with over 20 types of units. The Tiny Metal Saga continues on Nintendo Switch and PC. Bigger, better, more metal. Tiny Metal, Full Metal Rumble. Alright guys, so again, I'm going to be saying that again, Tiny Metal Full Metal Rumble, which is developed by Area 55 Incorporated and then published by Area 34 Incorporated. So before we proceed dito sa ating broadcast, I would like to shout out doon kay Rob Bosch for uh, being involved with us or tuning us dito sa game mode. So Rob, thank you for tuning radio, uh, game mode. Which is, ayun, share mo na sa mga kaibigan mo para kumalat yung ating community. Alright? Sige. Going back, we're now going to the tabletop side naman. So, ano naman yung nilayout ko naman dito for this today's episode? So, ngayon, sasabihin natin is, or yung itatakal naman natin dito, is kung paano ba ako actually magturo ng mga tabletop games. Kasi, uh, nag pansin ko sa mga kaibigan ko they have their own personal way of how to teach tabletop games so ako naman may parang formula ako to teach tabletop games kasi yung napansin ko sa mga iba ko mga kaibigan they do this first and then they lay out this first and then do this one explain mechanics ganito ganito and then ako naman nalilito ako bakit bakit inuuna nila itong ano explain dapat inu ano inuhuli mo na to bago yung ganyan so, eto, nagawa na ako ng sarili mga formula of how to teach the game, those games dun sa mga tabletop. So, eto, meron action naka-ready. So, etong ang first phase for teaching the tabletop. There are actually six, kung tama ako, ayun, six nga. There are six phases of how you could teach the game. In order, dapat, ha, for me. Pero, uh, disclaimer lang, you sh hindi mo naman kailangan sundan to. This is actually my own personal steps of how to teach tabletop games. So, iyon, pwede mo naman heroin and then i-alter mo lang to your liking or your preferences kung ano man yung trip mo. All right? So, first tip, short introduction. Um, tinuto ko iko dito yung short introduction is anong title ng laro? Anong genre ng laro? Ilan yung players na pwede maglaro nito? Ila gaano katagal yung laro na to? And then ilatag mo sa kanila kung ano yung mga parang basic things na kailangan nilang alamin yung tipo na ano uh, game information long story short pero yung binanggit ko yun yung pinaka importante alright so yung diba sinabi ko naman <coughs> excuse me sinabi ko naman game information sobrang broad yun diba so yung mga binanggit ko sa inyo yun yung mga isa sa mga examples na pwede mong i-lay out doon sa mga nakikinig sa'yo of teaching the game okay kasi I explain ko rin sa other uh, phases ng pagtuturo kung ano yung mga specific game informations or yung mga kailangan mong ilatag on that specific phase. Pero dito sa first step, yung binanggit ko, yun yung i-focus mo, which is yung game title, and then yung genre, yung gano'ng katagal yung laro, at saka yung player count. Alright? Second, storytelling. Dito ko na ipapasok kung um... Ano yung klaseng laro siya? So, sabihin natin, itong klase ng laro na to is a post-apocalyptic thing na they have to survive the specific dead of winter and then they have to do the specific objective na hindi nila alam pero kailangan nilang gawin. Yung mga tipo na ganun. Ano lang, example lang guys. So, storytelling, importante yon. That's how you get their attention or letting them hook. Kasi, importante kasi na pag i-introduce mo sila sa mga tabletop games, pag first time nila, kailangan makuha mo yung attention nila para makinig sila sa'yo. Kasi mahirap kasi na pag magla magtuturo ka, meron silang ginagawa na nagtetext sila o hindi sila nakikinig. Nag-uusap sila ng <laughs> katabi niya. Mahirap kasi yon, Kasi intindihin naman natin on the side ng nagtuturo. 
na dapat wag mong gawin yon. I already explained that in our previous episode, which is yung tabletop etiquette. Dapat mag- makinig ka. Alright? So, going back, storytelling. Importante yon To get their attention. Yun lang yung pinaka-importante. Kailangan ma- mapakwento mo, si- mapa- palakwento ka. Or magaling kang magkaroon ng idea. Like, titimplahin mo yung mechanic ng game kahit hindi naman totoo. There are times na ginagawa ko siya in my own personal experience. Like, yung story niya is about this pero tinitimpla ko ng iba to make it more engaging na matuwa yung mga nakikinig sa akin. So, that's second te- step. Third step. Component check. Ano yung component check? Bago ko kasi ine-explain yung mechanics ng game, sinasabi ko muna kung ano yung mga components na to. Example, and uh, hindi na may iwasan sa mga ano, there are few titles sa mga tabletop games na sobrang dami ng components, ba diba? So, imagine mo, i-explain mo yung rules tapos hindi pa nila alam ko na yung mga tokens na yan, ano yung mga ginagawa ng boards dito mahirap nilang i-grasp kung ba ko ano yung mga ito yun yung day lang kung ba, kung ba ko uh, inuuna ko yung components mo na bago ko ini-explain mechanics Like example, ito ang ginagawa nito, you're going to put barricades and, the, and this one is going to put wounds to the specific characters. Yung basta mga maraming tokens, maraming mga cards. Basta ituro mo lang kanila kung ano yung mga importante. This car- deck of cards is a survivor deck. This deck of cards is an incident deck. Yung mga ganun lang. Tapos pag ina-explain mo yung mga deck at saka yung components, give them a brief explanation of what does this specific component do. Alright, like example, uh, this in- this is an incident deck which is telling you that for every phase in the game, you have to do this mandatorily. Yung mga ganun na si- ano, situations pag nagtuturo ka. That's the third tip. And then fourth tip naman, dito na natin ili-lay out yung turn structure. So dito na natin ipapasok yung mga, kung ano yung mga phases na pwedeng gawin per player. Uh, bakit hindi ko inuuna yung mechanics kagad? Kasi importante na alamin muna nila kung paano yung Uh, third order ng mga ginagawa nila pag active na sila. Kasi eh, there's two things that you should ro- always keep in mind. There's active player and then na- an active player. Pag active player, sila yung currently on the turn na sila na yung nagpe-play. An active player, ibig sabihin nun, hindi na la turn pero there might be some game mechanics na pwede sila mag-play ng mga specific actions kahit hindi nila turn. So, usually, na-apply itong turn structure na to in the active player's turn. So, sabihin natin, sab- ayun, yung madalian, Yu-Gi-Oh! Ano ba yung mga turn phases or phases dito sa Yu-Gi-Oh! Draw phase, standby phase, main phase 1, battle phase, main phase 2, end phase. Yun, yung ganun lang kabilis. Which is, important yung turn structure na para malaman nila. And then, explain mo na mabilisan kung ano yung mga yun. Draw phase, It lets you draw one card, standby phase, all of the ka, uh, karak- ay, hindi naman characters, monsters or yung mga face up cards applies their standby phase effect, yung mga ganun na ano, situations. Okay? Uh, and then, dito na natin ipapasok. Next step, game mechanics. Doon mo na ilalatag lahat. Doon mo na sila i-overwhelm na. Itong uh, token na to, para magawa mo siya, you have to do this specific action. And then, to do this specific action, you have to roll a die or play this card. Pero pag ginawa mo to, you're gonna do specific consequences. So, depende yan sa complexity ng laro. Long story short, kailangan i-explain mo sa kalala in layman's terms. Ano yung tinutukoy ka na layman's terms? Yung tipo na maintindihan ng lahat ng tao. And, kasi mahirap kasi na magsabi ka ng terminology. Yun nga yung daylan, guys, pag, kung bakit ka naging game guru nga, ba diba? Or game curator na dapat nag-read ka ng rule books and then make it as simple as like teaching children or teaching non-gamers para makuha mo yung ano nila yung engagement nila dun sa nilalaro nila or yung tinuturo mo yun yung pinaka-importante which is pag nas- dun na sa gaming mechanics dito ka na mag ano mag <laughs> magbubos ng dugo or bubos pawis na mag explain ka. Kasi, while you're explaining kasi, magtatanong sila. Also, one tip, let them engage or let them uh, ask them questions to you na pag meron hindi malinaw na mga questions, pwede naman nilang tanongin para, sa, para maintindihan nila in any way. 
So, iyon lang naman yung importante. So, ano pa ba? So, before going back, um, meron sinasabi. All right. Sabi ni Pauline, which is nung sinabi mo yung Yugi, oh, naalala ko tuloy yung pinagtulungan niyo ako kakabi. <laughs> All right. Sorry naman. So, we are, ano na? Uh, out of the topic na yon, pero we actually played a very specific Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, card game na rin, which is about i-explain ko yung game na yon mamaya, kasi we're actually gonna feature that in our game mode, which is dun sa tabletop lock-on naman siya so, yun lang uh, what's next? this is actually the final tip yung ex- sasabihin ko end scoring or yung victory condition. Doon mo na ilalatag yung end scoring or yung victory condition. Kasi, pag nalaman nila kasi kaagad yung victory condition na the player who has the most points wins the game, the player who does this wins the game, or if everyone does this specific sen- uh, action, they win the game, if ever na co yun. Yung mga ano lang, parang ano lang, pabuga or pa-impact effect na parang tapos na ako mag ano, mag-explain na rules. At ito yung kailangan mong gawin para manalo ka. Parang pabugaw part ng factor. Para, like, oh, ganun lang pala yung pwede mong gawin para manalo ka. <laughs> yung imaginein mo, nasasabihin ni Game Guru na gawin mo to and that, and then <laughs> magulit ka lang, victory condition pala to win the game. Ganito lang yung gagawin mo, tapos ang dami yung gagawin. Like, gusto mong magkaroon na impact doon sa tinuturo ko yung ano yung daro na tipo na wow there are a lot of mechanics that you can do and then ito lang yung victory condition or yung scoring na pwede mong gawin so that's all of the personal steps that I could provide doon sa ating tabletop side all right so now going doon sa ating lock on naman sa game at sa tabletop side naman which is ito na uh, I actually explained dito dun sa previous post ko na It's actually made by two cosplayers, which is made by you and cosplay, yung laro na to. It is actually similar to Magic the Gathering, yung gameplay niya. And then yung production niya is actually similar dun sa net, uh, Android Netrunner. So, yung laro na to, actually nakaredy na sila dito sa table ko. <laughs> Lol. Uh, ito. So, this is Lord of Lands, made by you and cosplay. So, how does this game work? Before I explain that, eto na, nililayout ko na kung how I could explain the game. So, bibigyan ko na kayo, guys, like, a first round up of how I personally teach the game. Alright? So, ayun. <laughs> Panoorin nyo ako para magturo. So, una, uh, Lord of Lands is actually a card game, game uh, card game or competitive game or strategic game made by you and cosplay. You can actually play them for two players. And then, 2v2, 3v1, and then free for all. So, yung story kasi na itong laro na to, there is this specific kingdom that it's called Rakdar. Rakdar is a very, very big kingdom na pinagmumuhunuhan ng mga loyal bloodlines of, of Lightborn. Lightborn is a very, very OP. Hindi <laughs> naman OP. Pero, ano sila, mga magagaling na or very sobrang lakas ng bloodline nila because lahat ng magical capabilities nila every time pag nagkakaroon ng bagong ano panganak or bagong anak yung king at saka yung queen laging pinapalitan ng mga lightborns family yung bagong king which makes them lagi sila yung hari or yung nagmumuno with Rakdar pero one day kasi yung bagong panganak yung eldest with the story wala siyang uh, magical capabilities which is nagkaroon ng revolt doon sa kingdom nila kaya eto naman si character na to which is si Tito nila had this very uh, ka, ano bad intent to sabotage which is becoming the new king by killing the present king so nagkaroon ng very complicated family feud long story short So, sobrang dark ng story niya. So, yun lang. That's how I could explain the story. So, going naman dun sa ating ano, how does this game work? There are four phases in the game. Establishing phase, and then structure phase, attacking phase, and then end phase. Establishing phase, kasi bago ko i-layout ito, we're gonna go and explain the components in the game. 
For the purpose of teaching the game, ito yung gagamitin ko na deck, which is yung Deadwood deck. Alright? So, ito yung, tin yung nakikita nyo na card, kung nakikita nyo guys. This is the hero deck. Ang hero deck, ang nakikita nyo yun dito, hopefully nakikita nyo, on this very tinuturo kong the side, is merong number dito, which is 25. Ito yung health point ng character. Ito yung character illustration ng character. So, ito yung title ng kar ay yung pangalan ng title. Uh, sorry. Pangalan ng character, which is Deadwood. And then, yung nakikita mo dito, hero card siya. That is the type of that specific character. There are five types dito sa laro na to. Minions, heroes, spells, um, equipments, at saka ultimates. Yun yung kailangan nyo equip with my... Keep in mind doon sa mga types. And then, ito yung flavor text or yung effects ng character. Kung naki nakikita nyo dito, meron mga numbers dito. Yung numbers nito is specific dito dahil may mana requirement dito sa laro na to. It's basically, this is like Magic the Gathering nga. So, in this game, merong tinatawag na mana. Yung mana na yon is like yung mana consumption or yung energy mo to play specific cards or to activate specific uh, effects or that specific card. In this case, si Deadwood ang sinasabi dito, zero cost and then activate ability, three cost, activate ability, five mana cost, activate ability. I don't need to literally need to explain kung ano yung mga effects na yon. Long story, yun yung mga ginagawa ni Hero. So, dito, explain ko lang yung mga spells. So, si spells naman, ang sinasabi dito, kung nakikita mo dito, merong mana. So, eto, besides that, eto, mana. So, yung mana dito, naka-explain dito, eto, mali na naman to, Jin. Eto yung tinutukoy dito, mana to. So, to play this card, this is a minion card, by the way, indicated dito sa type ng card. So, this card, to play this card, you need to play or spend 2 mana para magamit mo siya to play in your play area. Every player has their own play area. Kasi parang ang ano, magic na gathering na eh. So, and then, on this very, ayun, yung baba side, meron dalawang numbers dito. Divided with the, ano, with the slash. Yung left side dito, tama, hopefully tama yung tinuturo ko, is the attacking value. And then, on the right side is the defending value. So, kung makikita mo doon, kasi dito sa laro na to, merong attack phase nga, ba? So, establishing phase, you, every player starts with 5 cards. At the start of the game, if abayaw mo yung cards mo dun sa lima na yon, you can actually redraw. Pag nag-redraw ka, you only draw 4 pag ayaw mo yung lima. And then, every player starts with 3 mana. Every turn mo, you'll start with 3 mana. Pero, pag first player ka, ang mangyayari doon pag start ng turn mo, you don't get to draw one card. Kasi, at the structure phase or establishing phase, you're gonna draw one card and then gain three mana. Pero, pag first player ka, you don't gain to draw a card, but you gain three mana as a first player. Alright? So, di ko na explain the rest of the cards. Pero, you get how the gist of how the game works. So, structure phase, you literally play cards with their specific prerequisites. As mentioned ko, kung ano yung ilan yung mana nito, Ano yung ginagawa na itong card na to and that. And then, uh, with the exception that bawal ka mag-play ng card pag hindi kaya ng mana mo. Example, sabihin natin itong minion na to has a 6 cost but you only have 3 mana. You cannot do that. In this game, you can retain your mana so if ever na hindi ka nag-play ng card on your turn, magre-retain siya and then you gain 3 mana. So, imagine mo, 3 mana mo on the previous turn, you gain 3 mana, that's equals to 6 mana on your next turn, which you can play on your next turn. Alright? Now, going back, attacking phase naman ang susunod kay structure phase. Attacking phase, ang ginagawa nito, two terminologies that you have to keep in mind is the attacking and then yung blocking. So, another thing of terminology that you have to know is there is tap and then untap. Tap is naka-active yung card, nakatayo. Untap, sorry, balik tala ko. Untap is yung nakatayo yung card and then they could do specific abilities if they need to be tapped. Tap is yung naka-sideways na yung card which they already activated their ability. Kasi every time you activate one specific character's ability, if ever man na kailangan nila mag -tap, you only do that once per turn. Alright? So, ganun si untap at saka si tap. So, dito naman kasi, 
yung attacking at saka defending, importante rin yung top at saka untap. All uh, minions can block the attacking player pag naka-untap sila. Kasi pag naka-top yung minions na yon, like nakahiga sila, they cannot block kasi they exhaust their action for that turn. So, pag nagkaroon na, pag turn mo na ulit, that's where you go back naman. Na pwede silang mag-untap ulit. And then you, they could do specific actions pa man din. Alright? And then end phase. Like, literal end phase lang. Wala kang gagawin at all. So, that's the basically the gist of how you can play the game. So, Lord of Lands, guys. Trivia. As I have mentioned, they're made by two cosplayers. By you and cosplay. And they're actually locally made. So, if ever man, you can actually check their page and then inquire kung paano mo makukuha yung game kung nag-ingan nyo or na pag nagkaroon ka ng interest with the game. ba? Diba? So, masaya to game, yung game na to, guys. Recommended to. Dahil ako, meron ako sariling personal copy. ba? Diba? Alright? So, eto na, guys. Thank you for tuning in. So, eto na yung game mode episode 8 natin. Before I wrap up, magkakaroon muna tayo ng major announcements. So, yung announcements natin, first of all, I do have a game uh, group. Sorry naman ha. May mental block ako. A uh, tabletop game group, which is Asobiken. Which is, we usually do this specific game group dun sa tabletop cafe. Ginaganap siya doon sa Vito Cruz. Dun malapit dun sa, ano, uh, sa loob-looban ng U Mall. Kung makita nyo man yung second floor ng tabletop na, ano, na green signage. Nandun na kami. So, next week, on the Saturday, gaganawin namin yung game gathering na yun. So, if you're interested, just go and go there. Or, actually, you can PM me on my Facebook page, dun sa Shikiyuki page ko, if ever man na interesado ka. Alright? Second topic, ay, uh, second uh, uh, announcements. I do have more gaming contents, which is meron na akong bagong YouTube channel. Shikiyuki rin yung pangalan. So, check mo dun sa, ano natin, YouTube channel, yung Shikiyuki, uh, Shikiyuki channel ko. Nandun na, meron na ako nakalatag doon ng mga, ano, mga gaming content ko. Like, top 20 upcoming game titles on Steam. How you could save up money. And then, yung mga nandun na rin, nilagay ko na rin doon yung mga jelly event videos ko. Eh, para mas maingit kayo dahil hindi kayo pumupunta dito sa mga conventions. <laughs> Yun yung mga content ko, guys. Pero, basically, mainly, yung mga content ko doon is gaming related. Or my adventures in regards to my personal life. And then, last but not the least, uh, syempre, hindi ko kakalimutan. So, until now, if ever man nandito ka sa game mode, very, very thankful ako. If ever man na-share mo yung page, thank you, dahil hindi ko nakikita kung na-share mo. And then, thank you pa rin sa mga nag-tune in, kahit wala na kayo. Kasi na-appreciate namin na kahit pa paano, binigyan nyo kami ng konting oras para makinig kayo with this program. So, if ever man, like, comment, and then share nyo if ever man nagkaroon kayo ng time in the lay, in the future episodes. Kahit rin ngayon, kahit wala na kami airing ngayon, kahit, ayan, it's already our history. Alright? So, um, ano, ano lang, outro na lang. Shikiyuki page, FB, at saka YouTube, VGA Radio, dahil wala, kung wala sila, wala na itong, ano natin, podcast natin. So, thank you, VGA Radio, and of course, Creative Voices Productions, we do also thank you for uh, giving me this, this opportunity. At saka doon sa Philippine Center of Voice Acting, Voice Works, kung gusto nyo pa rin sumali, na last batch for on the month of October, kung tama ako, month of October sila gaganapin. So, habol na kayo guys, as uh, batch 49 is currently ongoing within this month and then until sa October month. So, kung gusto nyo sumali, inquire lang kayo doon sa pinapabite ko na page. Of course, meron akong additional page pa na ipropabite. So, voice acting team. Like nyo rin yung page nila kasi they, they often do updates with regards to sa mga seminars nila at saka sa mga voice acting ano nila, related topics or yung mga nilatag nila doon with their updates like behind the scenes kung yung mga ano natin, yung mga ginagawa natin, mga fairy tales na natin, nilalagay natin nila doon. Or yung mga, ano nila, competitions of how you could join with our seminar or with our uh, voice works. Diba? And then, Ramier TV, of course. Yung tropa natin. Ramier TV is about yung uh, YouTube vlogger natin. is actually now yung naghahawak ng ating uh, voice acting team. So, he's actually a vlogger and then siya rin yung nagmamanage ng 
team ng voice acting team. So, if ever man na interested ka sa mga contents ng mga voice related topics, you can actually tune or subscribe dun sa, ano niya, sa YouTube channel niya. And then, kung ano, uh, gusto kong maging voice talent, yung page nila, like mo rin. Kasi, if ever man niya gusto mo i, ano, uh, maging voice actor or mga voice talent, or voice artist, kung yung tinatawag namin, like the page and then kunin mo rin yung libro nila. So yung libro yung libro nila kung interested ka, you can actually like on uh, order them dun sa Shopee Philippines. All right? So again, this wraps up our episode A. This is Shiki Yuki signing off and I do to see you soon in our next podcast or in my next video. So until the next video guys, cheers. Woo! Hear the voices of greatness on the world wide web. VG8 Radio, the voices of greatness.